as we keep standing let us turn to second kings i spoke from this passage today morning and i want to focus on one verse today evening from the same character that we meditated in the morning second kings chapter 4 and verse 26 i will read out to you <coughs> if you have your bibles you could look it up if you don't have your bible i request you to listen <coughs> second kings chapter 4 verse 26 i am reading from my version which is the nkjv please run now to meet her and say to her is it well with you is it well with your husband is it well with your child and she answered it is well amen is it well with you yes no maybe there is only one answer how many of you have seen three idiots ah this is sunday how can you talk about movies pastor what is this you i talk of movies you come to a youth meeting you will see the other side of peter sandin amir khan became popular by doing this ah ah see some people saw that all is well but that came from the bible hallelujah please sit down <laughs> god bless you <laughs> because that is exactly what she told she didn't say all is well she said it is well that means what everything is fine the question that elisha told his servant gehazi to ask this lady why i chose let me tell you <coughs> why suddenly because um from ash wednesday uh since this is the lent season in that sense while we don't follow lent in the way it was kind of institutionalized you know in christian churches both in the protestant and the roman catholic church uh mainline churches lent is is a very very important season um and lot of people do lot of things i don't have anything against anything that people do at least somebody is doing out of a ritual uh but my only uh prayer is in respect of what people do during lent or during non lent rather than doing something out of a ritual or a rule i believe and i pray and i encourage each one of you to obey god or to do something out of our relationship with him yes no right when you obey because of a rule you are not actually happy because all of us don't like all rules i am one of them if there is anybody here who says any rule is fine with me i mean you are god incarnate here i am sure right yes no as people as human beings most of the time we don't like rules we create our own rules right yes no <laughs> but since we are citizens of this country since we work in some organizations or you study in a college or a school or, and you are part of a house each of these has certain rules right and we obey in the same context if you not think about it as a rule but because of my relationship i obey the whole thing changes because there you are happy what you are doing because of that relationship and that is what we need to do as believers in lord jesus christ because i keep telling no jesus didn't come to offer a religion and that is true friends church and this world should know the whole divide is because religion is brought in when relationships are brought in 
it unites. And when we obey out of relationship, that obedience comes from the heart. And <clears throat> we've been answering one question or finding answer to one question in the scripture starting from Ash Wednesday till last Sunday, and I broke that this Sunday because day after tomorrow is important for every woman. March 8th is Women's Day. It's nice. One wife looked at her dear husband and she said, without your glasses, you look like that nice, smart young man I married a long time ago without your glasses. And the husband said, without my glasses, even you look very pretty now. <laughs> that was just a joke. There's nothing to do with the God's word today. <coughs> For all the wonderful wives to be happy, I'll tell you something else also. Keep your husband's photograph as a mobile screensaver. I'll tell you why. Whenever you are in some stressful situation, you could look at that photograph and say, if I could handle this person, I can handle anything. <laughs> now let us come to God's word, okay? Right? <laughs> yeah. <coughs> I gave this uh, theme in the morning because that is what is mentioned in one translation from 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 onwards. I'll quickly tell you the story and we will just go to this one verse. Uh, I don't want you to miss what I told in the morning, but I can't give you the entire message. If you understand Telugu, log into YouTube and the messages are uploaded there. <coughs> uh, this is about this lady who is from this place called Shunamite. There is no name mentioned about this lady. The name of her husband is not mentioned. The name of her son is not mentioned. Nameless people. But there is so much that is written about that family. And uh, when I was thinking of Women's Day, I was looking at, I was rather, you know, thinking, uh, should I speak about Esther? Should I speak about Lydia? Should I speak about Ruth? Should I speak? And, you know, this is what was going on my mi in my mind. And finally, I said, no, let me stick to Shunamite. It's a wonderful lady because the only description about this lady is, it says this, she is a great woman. And in my trans, in the Bible that I carry, it says, in verse, verse 8 it says, now it happened one day, I'm reading from 2 Kings 4th chapter, verse 8, now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem where there was a notable woman. In another translation it says well-to-do woman. In another translation it says wealthy woman. In another translation it says great woman. Whatever it may be, this woman is teaching us something, not just to women here, but to all of us, including me. So in the morning I spoke about two things about this woman. And let me just quickly give you that story. Oh, you could go back and read this chapter because there are two stories there, or two instances. The first seven verses talks about a widow of a prophet, of God's servant. And he dies, and she's left with two sons and with a lot of debt. And she goes to this very prophet, Elisha, and says, you know, you know my husband was God's servant, and now we are in debts. And my children are being taken now away as slaves if I don't clear the debt. And Elisha resolves that problem by asking them, what do you have in your house? And she says, I have just a jar of oil, nothing else. That was such a pathetic situation. He says, what is there in your home or house? He says, nothing but just one jar of oil. He says, go to your neighbors and bring as many vessels, empty vessels, and they keep bringing and he keeps pouring that oil from that jar which was in their own house. That's a different 
instance altogether a lot of lessons to be learned. After which this incident happens. He comes to Shunem and then there is this wealthy woman, a great woman, a well-to-do woman, a notable woman. She persuades him, requests him to have food in their house. And that becomes a practice. And he keeps coming to that house whenever he passes by. And she is taking care of him. And one day she walks up to her husband. And I dealt this in the morning today. And she talks to him. And I told, it is very important when some important decisions are to be made at home. This is for all the wonderful husband and wives that are here. That you both are supposed to talk to each other and come to an agreement before a decision is made, more so when it is important. It need not be day-to-day -day decisions, but there are some crucial decisions we as husband and wife take for our family. And she knows that. She looks to her husband and she says, you know, this person who is coming to our house is a great man of God, I know. And she says, why don't we make a small room for him? I spoke about these five things in the morning. A small room for him. Let us arrange a bed. Let us arrange a table. Let us arrange a chair or a stool and a lamp stand. I said, what are that for us now spiritually? I can't tell you all of that now. So in the morning, I, we meditated about the character of this woman and then the conduct of this woman. And in the evening, we will see some other seas. Okay. Looking at this verse 26. It's a long story. So I'll, I'll have to bring you up to speed till then. And um, she has everything, but they don't have children. And Elisha checks with his servant. He says, what is she need of? Go and ask. You know what? She says, I am fine living with my family. That means she doesn't even tell what she is longing for. Because having no children back then and even now is so painful for that couple. And especially for that woman because she was supposed she was treated as she is cursed, that she is barren. Barrenness was a was a big stigma during Bible times. It was not easy to bear that kind of a pain. But she doesn't say anything. The servant comes back and she tells, you know, that her husband is old and she doesn't have children. And Elisha tells her, in one year, you will carry a son. She says, don't build my hope. Like any other person, you know. She knows her situation. As human as she is, she says, please, <laughs> don't tell me all of this. Unnecessarily, you are, you are you know, building up hope in my life. She says, no. And she bears a child, fast forward, the child grows, and the child dies. That boy dies in her very lap. And that is where is today's story. It's amazing. I keep reading this many a time. Sometimes when I'm when I'm you know spiritually down, you know, when my faith kind of wavers. I'm human as you are. <laughs> Some testing times, trying times, and when I'm disturbed, I get back to these passages, this character. And what kind of a lady she is. The boy complains. This is all in the Bible, okay? I've just told you. <coughs> the boy complains of headache, and the father says, please take this child to the mother. They're in the field because it was harvest time. So they are supposed to be there because they'll be cutting down. <coughs> and taking all of this into those barns. A festive time, so to say. And there's a lot of work. So they bring the child, probably the father would have thought it's some normal headache. The child comes, he sleeps in the lap of the mother, and he dies. Young boy, just dies. And that is where is our meditation today. And she takes this boy, into that little rooms that she made for that man of God. I told you, no, she 
prepared a little room and she put a bed there. She carries this boy, her dead son, and keeps him, keeps that body on that bed. Comes out, closes the door, and her husband comes, see what she is telling. You will be baffled if you have not read it before. I will pick up that story there. Verse 20, 2 Kings chapter 4. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. When he had, and, and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. Verse 22. Then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. The husband doesn't know why she's asking for a donkey and a young man. So he said, why are you going to him today? Because this came all of a sudden. This was not a planned visit. Suddenly she is telling, I have to go to this man of God. And he says, it is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath, because those are some two important days where people go to man of God. And she said, same thing, what? Today's message is, it is well. Same thing. Are you with me? And she said, it is well. Tell me, the son is dead? And she is telling, it is well. Don't you think this is amazing trust in God? I mean, are you getting the point? I mean, I just can't understand. So the question today is, on what basis did she say that it is well looking at her dead son? And today, it may not be literal death in the family, but if you are facing situations that you feel can never be revived, that they are dead in that sense, that you feel that this cannot change ever, probably this word is coming to you today all over again because of the wonderful faith that she showed. So before we understand why she said what she said, we need to ask this question. Because this question, after which she actually goes straight to Elisha, and when, when Elisha sees her coming at a distance, given the way that she is coming, he sends his servant Gehazi to check what happened. Why is she in such a hurry? And the servant goes and asks, is, are you fine? Is your husband fine? Is your son fine? And she gives the same answer. We'll come to that at the end. She says, it is well, but I still need to meet the man of God, Elisha. She gives the same answer. Same answer. So this question is about our family. <coughs> is everything fine with your family? Yourself, your wife, your children, if that is your family or or whoever is a part of your family is all is well. But before that, the bigger question we need to ask is, is it well with your soul? Because that is the most important. Because the Bible says, what profit does it make if a man gains the whole world? Only Alexander the Great ever tried once to conquer this world. He was successful to an extent, after which nobody tried. <coughs> But God is settling that issue. He says, what profit does it make if a man wants to gain the whole world and lose his soul? So is your soul saved? Is it well with your soul? Is a question each one of you needs to ask. And if you are not saved, it is my prayer that you open this heart of yours and give him, I told in the morning, this lady prepared a little room 
and God wants little space in your big heart. Little space. And it is my prayer that everybody opens their heart and say, Lord, come in. Because that is the only way that you could taste life, life eternal. Little space. I, sp I told in the morning, you know, that Satan starts by taking little but grabs everything and leaves us with nothing. That is the trick of Satan. That is the deception of Satan. The kind of life that I led, I keep telling many a times. It all starts off. Anybody who gets into some kind of sinful habits, it all starts without even your knowledge. Little by little, little by little. And you lose everything. I lost all my finances. I lost all my health. But when I came back to God, without anything, a life that is totally wrecked. When I came to the Lord, I was an alcoholic. When I came to the Lord, I was, I was a drug addict. When I came to the Lord, I had four lakh rupee debt. Nothing, oh, everything gone. Health, wealth, everything gone. With a stigma of dishonesty. Character-led person. That was what Peter Samuel 21 years back. But he said, come. Amen. Think about it. He said, come. Give me little space in your life. I'll give you back everything. Hallelujah. Tell me who can do it. Nobody. No power in heaven or in earth except Lord Jesus Christ. That, that is what it is. When we give little, he gives back a lot. The problem is even to give that little, we feel we are giving a lot. That is the problem. If he says, I need 10% of your income, you say 1% I will give. And he says, you live with, then you will continue to be in debt. So little. <coughs> so is it well with your soul? If it is well with your soul, wonderful. So quickly we will look at a couple of things. What made her give this consistent response or reply? When, I, when her husband asked, she said it is well. When Gehazi asked, she said it is well. How could she say that? It is not because of three things. It is only because of one thing. And quickly, I will I'll take you there. And with that, we will close. The first thing is, it is not because of her course. Or the, when we say course, we say no. It is the way our life is panned out. That is the course of my life. To that point in time, from a worldly standpoint, from this society, if you see this lady, everything was favorable for her. Everything. She had status because she was a wealthy woman. Right? Notable woman. That is one. The second one was, not only was she wealthy, she had good status, she also had great spiritual discernment. If you see, she says, her, says to her husband, I know that he is a holy man of God. I mean, how could she look at the person and say, this person is a holy man of God. So she had the discerning spirit, which is wonderful. But she didn't tell it is well because of her course of life. And it is not only about her status, not only about her spiritual discernment. She was a lady, I told in the morning, she was satisfied with whatever she had. <coughs> she didn't have a child. They were childless. That couple was childless, but yet she never told that this is the need I have. A content woman is more, I told in the morning, now I'm telling she's a satisfied woman. Satisfied with what she had. But that was not the reason she said it is well when her son died. That was not the reason. 
the second one is not because of her companion either because this man was a wonderful husband he understood her totally sometimes young people think you know if i marry the right person life will be wonderful there is nothing like a right person <laughs> let me clarify because there will be you know initially before marriage whether love marriage or arranged marriage each one has a list first you start with height then color then whether i, I don't know <laughs> right there are, there are couple of things tell me honestly everything will not get a tick go home and check now that doesn't mean that you leave your dear wife or husband and go away once married married forever <laughs> okay but you know there'll be few we might have a have a huge checklist but finally we know heart of hearts we know within this if four five things are okay we'll say fine right so i keep telling it is not about finding the right person it is being the right person in another life will make a marriage successful this is the mantra i give it to you i should be the right person for my wife because she had some expectations about how her husband was supposed to be before marriage it is my responsibility after marriage to slowly understand and say you know i am sure you had a checklist some things hopefully i was okay where is that i don't have a tick mark so i'll try to be that are you getting the point that is being the right person each one of us should be the right person and here both of them were right for each other in that sense but that was not the reason <coughs> it is not because of our companion it makes life good if there is wonderful understanding between husband and wife lot of things become easy and more so if both of us both of them believe in god and you know are spiritual we can face whatever situation but that is not the only reason so he was somebody who really understand he was the one who provided her security and took care of her but it is not just because of her companion the third one it is not because of her circumstance also it is not because of her course of life it is not because of her companion it is not because of her circumstance till that point in time all circumstances were favorable were favorable if you see their farming business if you have to look at it in today's perspective was doing fine that is why they became wealthy they had servants at home and the only thing that was lacking was provided without asking think about it they didn't have children and elisha as a man of god without she asking for that need said gave that promise and the promise got fulfilled so everything the circumstances in her life everything was favorable nothing went against at any point in time so because everything was fine did she say the future also will be fine is that the reason she said it is well no if it is not i've come to the main thing if it is not her course of life that helped her tell this if it is not her companion if it is not her circumstance then what was it the answer is simple the answer is her confidence in god her confidence in god she is a classic example of complete trust in god because of which it is a deep deeper truth if you go back and read that whole incident all over again you will understand that she had so much of trust in god faith in god believing and trusting are two different things do you agree 
I told this, uh, I think, many a times. A lot of people, you know, use this as synonymous. Just because I say I believe doesn't mean I trust. Right? <laughs> Let me give you a true story. You will understand this clearly. There was this tight rope walker. I forgot his name. This guy used to tie a rope across the waterfalls of Niagara and walk from this end to the other end. Niagara waterfalls, if you look at it, it's only scary. And he used to walk. And there were times he walked to the middle, took a small stow, put an omelette to eat and then went. That kind. And there was this three-wheeled cart once he took that three-wheeled cart, you know, back when we didn't have all this mechanized uh, uh, equipment to lay roads, you know, that three-wheeled cart, right, they bring sand and all of that. That kind of a cart, he took on this rope. He took on this rope and went to the other side. And once when he did this, he came back and there was hundreds of people watching. He asked this question, do you believe that I can go to the other side one more time? He already did it before them with this three-wheeled cart. Everybody said, because they saw, everybody said we believe. Then he went to one person like me and he said, why don't you sit in this, we'll go to the other side. He said, no. <laughs> that is the difference between what? I believe and I all of us will raise up. I believe. Get into the cart? No, my that sister will get in. <laughs> this lady is showing us what it means to trust God. Their son is dead. But nowhere it is seen in her feelings that she was fighting this battle. Amazing. So because of her confidence in God, because she knew that I didn't ask for this child, it was given to me by him, so I will go back to that same person and say that you need to come and help me out. And she came there with faith. It, it just baffles me what kind of a trust that she had. She gave that consistent or constant response or reply because of the trust she had and because of which she took that courageous stretch of journey. And if you, if you, if you read what she tells that servant in verse 24 is, after she tells her husband, it is well, she says, then she saddled a donkey, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 24, she says, Then she shadowed the donkey and said to her servant, Drive, go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. I'm sure this is not written here. I imagine. No. Many a times when I, when, I, when I read passages like this, I reconstruct that scene. It's, and it will be beautiful. That how would have been that scene? She is getting down and, you know, I'm sure she would have not gone with that kind of a, you know, anxiety and, and speed. I'm sure people around, because she's a wealthy woman, she's a notable woman, that means she was known in that place. And suddenly she's going with a servant at such speed, I'm sure people would have asked her, right? Yes, no? Suddenly you see somebody, you know, just going you know, with such kind of speed. I'm sure people would have stopped and what, what's wrong, you know? What has happened? What would be her answer? It's not there here, but easy to guess. The same answer she gave to her husband, I'm sure she would have given. She would have told, all is well. <laughs> it is fine. What kind of faith? <laughs> the same answer. At home, on the way, and when Gehazi meets, it is well. It is well. It is well. 
many a time we keep telling nothing is well think about it she was able to tell this that certainty in her response even though she was going through so much of pain think about it when i when i read this again today evening before i came i was just placing myself in her situation to suddenly lose her son and and the person died the one and only dear son who was given in a miraculous way suddenly dies in your lap and and you just lift that person up put him on the bed the dead body close and come back and the husband didn't know anything anything all she said it is well i have to meet <laughs> she disregarded that pain that she was going through she disregarded the pain many a times we carry that pain and we are confused and we don't know what we are asking this notable woman is teaching us that when you come to him come with complete trust and leaving it to his will very important that you say lord i come to you i know she disregarded that pain and her faith had a lot of depth a lot of depth i will tell you a true story while this is also a true story because everything that is written in the bible is true or false 100% true every letter you could google this name later don't do it now spafford he was um, a well to do lawyer back in 1860s in the city of chicago very well to do and uh, he was also a great friend of the great preacher back then dl moody dl moody is one of the best speakers like ch spurgeon these are like amazing men of god in the 1800s in the city of chicago dl moody was used mightily in 1870 their four year old son died one and only son spafford's family he and his wife annie and they went through that pain and in 1871 there was this great chicago fire accident that happened you can google it and these are facts and this man who was a well to do lawyer had a lot of real estate investment and because of the chicago fire all of his real estate investment was destroyed in 1872 1873 he wanted to take his family by then he had four daughters one and only son died he was planning to take them to a vacation to england by the sea through the atlantic and the last minute because of some business reasons he had to cancel his trip and then he had to send his wife and his four daughters in that ship the name of the ship was willy d havre and when the trip took off that journey november the 2nd 1873 a disaster happened and in 12 minutes the ship sank 226 people died back then there were only telegrams and one telegram came to spafford with two words the two words were saved alone this is a true story saved alone sent by spafford's wife 
that means all their four daughters died the next day he took the next ship to england and when that ship was passing that very stretch where the previous ship sank the captain told this was the place where willy that ship sank and when he passed by he wrote a hymn it is well with my soul think about it go home and listen to the lyrics of that song it is well with my soul he penned that while his ship was passing by that spot where his four daughters died it is well with my soul that is what is christian hope think about it when we lose something we are shattered but if you are in the lord you know that death is only a passage from here to there for those who don't believe in the lord it is the end of the matter but for those who are in the lord that is just a passage so do you have the trust in god whether things work your way or they don't will you tell today since my lord is with me it is well with me and the day you read that stage i am telling you it is better whatever happens this is a short life a lot of things will happen ups and downs i told the situation when my dad passed away all of a sudden 22 years back 11 years back i lost my mom both of them sudden death but when i look back the way god led us i can tell that yes it has been well with me it is worth it to go through all of this because he knows better if he takes us to certain situations he knows better why he allows certain things because that is how you and i are built and his plans and purposes will be revealed this woman of shunem teaches us confidence and courage in god complete confidence and courage in god he that began a good work in you that is what paul says i am confident that he will complete it our god is a god who completes things that he takes up he doesn't leave anything half done that is the god we have but provided you say lord yes i give myself to you why don't we just close our eyes and bow our heads as god spoke to each one of us as he always does is there anybody here who is in a situation who is telling pastor ana some things are not well things at work is not fine things in my family are not fine things with my friends are not fine something is not fine with my health and i don't know what else but this notable woman trusted in god and she said laying her dead son's body was able to respond to anybody who met her with one constant reply that it is well will you be able to tell with faith that while things don't seem to be well i know it is well because my god is in control say lord give me that kind of faith to hold on to you and you alone and to understand 
your response to my situation. And if there is anybody here who is not yet given that little room for God, you have room for everything but God in your life. Why don't you open your heart and say, Lord, please come in. This very life, I owe it back to you. Please give him some space in your life. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. You're such an awesome God. Father, we seek your forgiveness all over again. Because there are times, oh Lord, in our life, we doubted you. We probably were angry with you. We seek your forgiveness, Lord. In respect of whatever we face, O oh Master, help us to tell with all our heart, it is well with us because of who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.